You seem to be training him to be a warrior. Is that entirely wise? Jimmy never tried in anger, or use it for your own gain. You will be a knight Templar, soldier in the service of God. Leave Jerusalem without giving that. And you and your brother Templars will have safe passage wherever you wish. My duty is to protect Jerusalem. Even if the decision was mine to make, my answer would still be no. Then you will die. It's all in the hands of God. You swear to uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand, and never to share our secrets nor divulge the true nature of our work, and to do so from now until death, whatever the cost. Together, we will usher in the door. Hello everyone and welcome to Tradcat Night Radio. I am Eric Kajewski, founder and owner of Tradcat Night. And this evening I want to talk about the topic of Thanksgiving. We are of course drawing closer to that special day when we do give thanks. But in this modern world, this particular topic is one in which we don't give thanks truly on just Thanksgiving Day, we should be giving thanks daily to our Lord. And so the soul that's engaged uh, with the Divine, who constantly is interiorly dialoguing with our Lord, learns over time to constantly give thanks in all things. And so before we get into uh, our talk this evening, let us say a prayer to Our Lady. To ask her for intercession and to help us in this talk tonight and to help all those out there who are asking and who have needs that through her immaculate heart uh, they might be met in accordance to God's will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Two scriptures to start with tonight. Very basic, very fundamental to the spiritual life. First, we have 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Second, Colossians 3, verse 17, excuse me, verse 16 through 17. Learn, too, to be grateful. May all the wealth of Christ's inspiration have its shrine among you. Now you will have instruction and advice for one another, full of wisdom. Now there will be psalms and hymns and spiritual music as you sing with gratitude in your hearts to God. Whatever you are about, in word and action alike, invoke always the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, offering your thanks to God the Father through him. Now we see, uh, again, two very basic scriptures, but again in this modern world, and even traditional Catholics alike, how, how do so many on a daily basis uh, neglect or fail to give thanks to God? And this will tie in with the necessity of of being able to be uh, alone with our Lord in silence and in solitude, 
The soul has to constantly learn to draw itself inward to always be dialoguing with our Lord. And the more it can interiorly dialogue with God, then the more time and the more opportunities you have therein to give thanks to God. And so in this modern world where there's constant distractions running from the computer, running to the TV, running to your new iPhone or whatever the latest technology is, the latest video game, or going to the bar or going to the club, it's, it's always about going somewhere rather than just remaining as is and being to able to draw yourself in in prayer and to be able to engage with our Lord in prayer. And this is what our Lord expects of all of his followers. And so the most basic and fundamental um, aspect, if you will, of the spiritual life and giving thanks is often the most overlooked. And so what I would offer here in this brief little talk are three points primarily. First, let us give thanks in all things, not just what agrees to you. Now, very often we see people who, you know, might inherit, you know, a small amount of money and, you know, they immediately get happy. That's human nature. You know, but what happens if 10 minutes later they lost that $1,000? Well, they might get sad. They might be down and depressed. But our Lord allows these certain events to happen because in the end it's all about your salvation and what's best for you. Maybe God thought that if you had that $1,000, you would not use it wisely or use it for evil purposes. And so very often we overlook um, these things that God allows, which seemingly on the surface seems like a punishment, if you will, but in reality it's only meant to protect and preserve your own soul. It's only meant for you to grow, to grow further in grace, to grow in selfless love. So in the spiritual life, they're, they're not, we shouldn't, get too high so to speak and even the saints will speak about this in terms of whether they had uh, mystical visions raptures and all of this good stuff of course in and of itself that's a great gift of god and we should give thanks to that but we can't ride that euphoric high so to speak and we must always kind of maintain a, a certain uh a certain level if you will of always accepting the good and then always accepting the supposed bad when in all things truly they work out in your into your benefit because again it's all for the benefit of your own salvation and so we see the example from the saints like saint teresa of avila who states in all created things discern the providence and wisdom of god and in all things give him thanks then we have saint uh, margaret mary who would uh, state this? Would that I exhaust myself in acts of thanksgiving and gratitude, and, and gratitude towards this divine heart for the great favor he shows us, and deigning to accept our help to make him known, loved, and honored. He reserves infinite blessings for all those who devote themselves to this work. Again, all of our actions must be orientated towards God, towards the glory of God, and ultimately to get focus off of ourself. The whole goal is to draw away from self-love. And as I've explained before, this is why our Lord gives the cross, because it's uh, it's an, an enabler, if you will. It That heavy weight of the cross helps you orientate your own heart uh, and, and, and intellect based upon Christ now. It's to draw yourself away uh from your own suffering to unite it to his heart and understand that it is it's him it, everything is about him and so again we must draw away from self-love i cannot stress that enough uh for those who are living in the modern world and then we have saint alphonsus uh de la Gloria who states but it was not so much the sorrows of his passion which saddened and embittered the life of our own Redeemer, 
as the sight of all the sins which men would commit after his death. These were the cruel executioners which made him live in continual agony, oppressed by such an overwhelming grief, that pain alone would have been enough to make him die of pure sorrow. Father Lysias says that the sight alone of the ingratitude of mankind would have been sufficient to make Jesus die grief of a thousand times. That is powerful. That is something powerful to reflect upon today, this evening, to think about how many this day are, uh, they do not have gratitude towards Jesus for even dying for their sins. And again, we live in such a fast-paced modern world where we don't slow down our own lives to sit and even think five minutes about that on a daily basis. Uh, and especially in these dire times when uh, the church is being completely demolished by the Vatican II modernists, liberals, the, the, the Masons and Marxists who have infiltrated the church, and certainly Our Lady and, and her Immaculate Heart shares in this suffering with the Sacred Heart. But it's something that we need to be preoccupied with God's work and not our own work uh, in accordance to our own uh, duties of state, if you will. We should always have time. Even as a married couple, I, I tell and I teach... You know, allow for your your partner to have an hour alone with our Lord, um, and, and work work out a schedule to where that can happen, because it's very very important and vital for the soul to to form that habit of continually uh, drawing within and and dialoguing with the, our Lord, to where this can now be take taken out to the real world, if you will. While you're shopping, you can still be praying the rosary. While, you know, while you're mowing the lawn, you can be still saying uh, various prayers. Uh, so <clears throat> these are things that, again, seem so basic and so fundamental, but how many of us forget to do that on a daily basis? And so, again, the, the first point is to give thanks to God in all things. We must demonstrate our faith that our Lord knows what's best for us. And so let us see God's will in all things and accept. The second point, um, which kind of ties in with the, 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 the first point here, but it, it's to give thanks in those the littlest of all things. And the reason why I, I say it as such is because we're entering a period where we now have modern man that has been building himself up with all the technology and all the things that, the things, the quote unquote things that surround man, and God's about to strip it from from men. Okay, so when the economic collapse happens and people lose their homes, you know, people will be struggling for food and water, and everything's going to be stripped from them, and this is going to be done in God's love because He wants to reorientate hearts back onto Him. Okay, we have to come back to the basics. We have to learn to be a simple and humble people once again. And unfortunately, uh, we see where, where man, mankind is continually going, where this new world order is going, and they're, they're, they have replaced man with God. So we see such, um, we such, see such horrible uh, effects of this um, enthronement of self, if you will, in the heart, you know, through eugenics, through abortion, through youth, euthanasia, and it's going to be through severe chastisement, a, a, sh a complete stripping, if you will, of those things on the surface so that people can re reorientate their hearts in the interior life so they can realize that everything comes from God, and God is the source. The Sacred Heart is the source in the end. And so that's why I say to, to, to give thanks in the littlest of all things. Try to form the habits even over just drinking a cold glass of water. Because in the days ahead, uh, and people in California right now who are struggling with water, people in Detroit, um, that's going to be more common in the days ahead. There, there's going to be a lot of people who could not even get a, a nice cold glass of water in the future. Give thanks in the littlest of things. Uh, in terms of food, you sh of course should always be praying and, and, and uh, say a quick prayer before you 
before you eat and give thanks to God, but just sit and reflect upon all those people that God has put in your lives, whether for the apparent good or the supposed bad, because you have to remember those people who you may find irritating, those are the, those are the people who were actually um, presented to you as opportunities for you to grow spiritually, for you to grow in patience, for you to um, have more compassion. Um, and so if everyone was agreeable to you, uh, you wouldn't have necessarily those opportunities on a daily basis for you to grow. So you have to see and be able to recognize that right on the spot. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you're living interiorly and bringing that interior to the surface, as opposed to just living on the surface level, if you will, uh, just kind of always uh, acting and reacting to things on the surface. And so, uh, as I have stated, it's to be a contemplative in action. And so again, please, um, let us give thanks to God in the littlest of all things. And the third, of course, is, uh, I mentioned it briefly, is to kind of learn and train yourself to do this. And so I suggest at least one hour of a day you should be spending alone in silence and solitude whether it's before the Blessed uh, Sacrament for an hour, whether it's um, you have a nice uh, quiet meditational room uh, where you can read uh, the saints, where you can read a good book like The Imitation of Christ, is to truly get yourself away from life's busyness and start to train your heart to start drawing yourself inward and uh, to continually to ask for the graces through the Immaculate and the Sacred Heart because uh, this is the pattern or the example that the saints have given to us. And so we have another wonderful quote here from St. Mark the Aesthetic, who states, A man wanted to do evil, but first prayed as usual, and finding himself prevented by God, he was then extremely thankful. So again, in, in this type of situation, which can be applied here to the future, the man who's the, the interior man is not going to make all these knee-jerk uh, human nature reactions. He's going to know and understand that God is his source. He will see it as God's will. And he's not going to run around in panic like a chicken without his head cut off, like 95% of the world, it, it seems, apparently is going to, once the economic collapse happens and uh, the chastisements get rolling. And so... Even in all these things, when we see things collapsing around us, you know, we should have a smile on our face and to know that this is God's will, that he's purifying the world, he's purifying our souls, preparing some for uh, entrance into heaven, through, through whether it's martyrdom, uh, but then also for those who will get through this, um, this period of transition, if you will, into the the triumph of the Immaculate Heart is to purify those souls so that we can rebuild society again. That's what's going to be necessary. We're going to have to rebuild society uh, within the framework of Catholic monarchies again, uh, rooting everything in the divine law. And we should be a people, especially here in America, of thanksgiving. And here in the West, we're a very materialistic um you know, we're, we're driven, for the most part, by greed, you know, and the need to have more. And that's not truly what it's about. It's not about surface level living. It's about the in, it's about the interior way. It's about learning how to be selfless, not self-absorbed. Um, and so we have a, another wonderful quote here from uh, St. Bosco. Oh, my children, how great is the divine providence. How generous God is to us, how much he loves us. Let us always be grateful and good. Let us love him and never offend him. In turn, he will always provide for our needs. So the good God is always good. He doesn't have a switch that he turns off and um, jumps ship, so to speak, and, and can become evil. He's always good. So those things, again, which don't agree to us, it is only because it, there's something in us that is wrong. There's something that's not programmed in us that is agreeable to the divine will. So as I have stated before to those who, who will ask questions on 
perhaps some spiritual direction. If you're finding yourself in these emotions, and it's not always, but if you're finding yourself, uh, for example, let's let's take a basic example. If someone is attached to their football team, and pardon me for using a, a more loose example, but let's say your football team is playing this weekend, and they just you know, gave up a, a late touchdown and they lost. And you find yourself actually angry, or you find yourself actually crying over the matter, God forbid. This is showing to you that obviously God's will was not for them to win. But so that difference between what God willed and where you are, where you are at, where your attachment is, there's that gap. And so that, that difference comes out in your emotions and in your passions. And so if you were simply detached, um, if you were simply detached from this, um, from the football team or whatever the case may be, you would not have uh, such a reaction. So that's why it's very, very important as an eagle, okay, to be detached from the world, to be detached from these things, because if we're constantly focused in on Christ, how can we ever not be happy? And no matter what we're doing, whether we're working, you know, whether you're you're uh, cooking dinner, whether you're mowing the lawn, if you're always constantly focused in on Christ, we cannot possibly lose. We cannot possibly um, be rattled. Our peace cannot be rattled. And so again, we often find this with fear too. If we're finding ourselves to be fearful, it means that we we still have self love in us. You know, perfect love casts out all fear, says Scripture. So let's pay attention to how we are living on the surface, and if you will, perhaps even journal. You know, pay attention to how you are reacting on the surface and see what you are attached to. Make notes, and then um, obviously. Uh, make the corrections. Start sh striving towards a greater, uh, towards perfection. Start tri striving to become more detached from things that you find yourself becoming attached to. You should always want to be progressing each and every day, not regressing. And so if we're not paying attention to those things, you know, and ex examining our conscience um, on a daily basis, and I offer to, to do it quite often, you know, morning, sometime in the middle of the day, and perhaps at night, or not perhaps, you should do it at night, um, we can't analyze, you know, the sins that we are committing and how we are offending God, and then make those adjustments and try to continually uh, get better. And that's ultimately what we want to do is we're transforming and transitioning into the period of the, uh, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart is to become a more virtuous people is to really live by the divine law, to live by the rule of selfless love, and to continually uh, love God, of course, first, but then love our neighbor. And so let us pay attention to these things in terms of giving thanks, because it's it's something, I hate to say, but here in the West, it, it's, you know, Thanksgiving Day comes, it's a great day of, of everyone getting together, of course, with family, and there's there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But then, you know, what about the next day? What about the day after Thanksgiving? Do you, do you still even spend five minutes in Thanksgiving? I would say the majority probably do not. So let's let's get down, and just like a good football team, let's get back to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. Let's spend each day uh, in silence, uh, at least an hour, and in solitude. And let's start bringing the interior out into the surface. Let's continually ask God for those graces through the Immaculate and Sacred Heart. And so as we wrap up here, just just so you know, I will keep you all in my prayer so that uh, each and every single one of you continue to grow further, to continue to uh, grow in the virtues, to continue to show that charity, to show us as traditional Catholics, especially to those who are still trapped in the Novus Ordo, that, hey, we do have the proper faith and we are demonstrating it. We are living um, in accordance to how Christ asks us to. And just as St. Francis 
uh, said concerning his own preaching, and I'm Franciscan at heart. You know, we have to lead by example. We have to lead. Let our our actions do the talking. Let our actions do the preaching. Uh, sometimes the best sermon can be the one where there are very few words spoken and things are very simple and the person can see how absorbed you are in God. And that can have a major impact on someone who's so busy and, and running to and fro and is just completely restless. Uh, and this, of course, speaks to human nature. So let us be a, a proper conduit, if you will, proper vessel for our Lord Jesus Christ. And as an eagle, of course, we always want to show ourselves good to the, to the world. We want to show ourselves good to our neighbor. And I ask you to please keep me in prayer. And I will be posting this video and also the video from uh, last night concerning the confusion in the Vatican II crisis tomorrow on Tradcat Night Radio. So uh, I should be doing uh, a little bit more longer shows now. So for those of you who you know, have 10 minutes at a time, uh, it's very, very difficult to do these talks in less than a half hour, 45 minutes, depending upon the subject. I know when I was working with Christopher, uh, you know, we could do talks for about two hours, but I realized that's it's just way too much for people to to be able to break down and digest over the course of a week. So I want to try to be brief, but at the same time, I, I don't want to uh, cut corners, so to speak. So um, please continue to look for these radio shows throughout the week, and they'll be posted on my YouTube channel. So make sure you get there. Go to YouTube and simply type in Tradcat Nights, and you can subscribe to our channel and get and get hooked up to the latest videos. Uh, that are coming out on a nightly basis. So uh, please keep me in prayer. And again, let us give thanks in all things. Let us give thanks in the littlest of things. And let us con uh, continually uh, be disengaged from the world. Let's spend time in that silence and that solitude so that we can continually train ourselves to be thankful. And so when we go out into the world, if you will, when we go out and we are conducting our duties of state, and for for most who are probably listening, it's not the religious life, um, that we can still maintain that interior life and still be um, on the surface level, if you will, and engaging others. We have to make an impact. That's what I often was told in the business world, and, I, and it stuck with me as I moved up, so to speak, in the business world. Make an impact. And this is how we make an impact by showing ourselves well and how we conduct ourselves to be well learned in the Catholic faith. But the man who is not perceived as thankful uh, is going to be given less credence. And if, per and if a person can perceive that uh, in your own soul and in your own disposition, he's going to be least, he's going to be less likely to really listen to what you have to say concerning the Catholic faith. So let us draw more souls into the t traditional Catholic faith. Uh, by how we live. So I will leave you with, um, of course, again, what I've stated earlier, I will keep you in prayer. Please keep me in prayer, and please keep supporting uh, the SXPX resistance. Uh, keep them in your prayers uh, and donations uh, for Tradcat Night. For those who have been asking, the email to send those, to send your donations to or to get the address that I will give you uh, will be Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com and I appreciate those who in these past few weeks have done so. Um, this will go towards a very aggressive uh, marketing, promotions, advertising campaign and uh, as I've said we recently were on several uh, major websites and so we were able to reach more of the mainstream church. So I thank you once again. God bless. Please keep me in prayer. And uh, let us continue to pray for those graces uh, through the Immaculate and Sacred Heart. Amen.